Yo guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode in the Football Manager series. This is episode number 10 and today we're returning with two big games as we start off a very tough month of December away at Anfield against Liverpool and a home to Arsenal in a London derby. Before we get to the games though, shall I follow me getting on the camera and also some transfers that are going through in January as well. Let's get to those first. So both of these deals were completed, I believe, in November, but of course they won't go through until the January window starts. Now we'll start with the departure. As you can see, Josh Onoma uh, is going to leave us and go to the Netherlands and join AZ Alkmaar. He was upset in the summer that Gagliardini would take his position in the team. And I was like, well, you normally play an inside forward job for us, but even so, he never dropped that issue. And I was like, well, I don't play you much anyway. And your wages are 30 grand a week, which isn't bad. But as we know, I'm trying to reduce the already very high wage structure at Fulham. We're doing a decent job, more on that in a moment. And uh, in the end, I let him go for a cut price deal of £8.75 million. I believe there's a percentage of profit of next sale of 20% as well. So it could be all right, even more in the future possibly. But yeah, to be honest here, yeah, five determination. Didn't have much of a chance in one of my sides, but I'm okay letting him go. Haven't really used him much this season and haven't missed him much. I don't think we will. And also, I'm going to bring in a 16-year-old <laughs> with some really good mental stats of 700k. Yeah, 19 determination, 13 for work rate and teamwork isn't too bad. To be fair, this guy actually looks like a really decent player for the future um, if he kicks on in his development. And I just I just love having players like this in my academy, man. It's just so, so cool to have good, high determination young players so in terms of what's been going on in the run of camera well as caught as course of course in the last episode we saw our 4-1 defeat to Everton where Miroslav Closer uh, sorry Moise Keen uh, was living rent free in our six yard area and scored four goals and a 4-1 defeat and a 1-0 victory over Brentford in the London derby seven games in a run of camera and it was all about perspective as well in this run you could say well you only won two out of seven or you could say in your last five Premier League games you haven't lost. All about whether the glass is half full or half empty. We start off with the lost 0-2 at home to Southampton. I don't know what it is about this Fulham team conceding late goals, but it's infuriating. Took the lead through Bobby Reid, but in the Saints, to be fair, scored two absolutely sensational goals. One of those games where like the goals that were scored against you, you can't have to just say nothing we could have done, really. Wanderson with a wonderful free kick, and then Camposano in stoppage time. My goodness, what a goal that was in a 2-1 defeat. Uh, following that goal, destroyed. James Park against the Magpies. Then we lost Southampton again in the Carabao Cup fourth round. Didn't care at all. And in a 3-3 draw away at Crystal Palace where once again we conceded a late goal. The amount of points we've dropped since the save began from conceding goals in like the, the final 5-10 minutes is infuriating. Great topsy-turvy game. No Reed scored two in this one including one from the spot. Uh, middle of the year which got one for Crystal Palace. Uh, and then in the second half after we were leading by three goals to one. Uh, David Brooks, formerly of Bournemouth, made it 2-1, two, uh, two uh, sorry, 3-2 even, and then uh, with two minutes to go, Mateta makes it 3-3 three, three in a, a, another frustrating sort of throwaway game. We should have had all three points in the end, only got the one, but our last three games, pretty decent run of form, as you can see, two wins and a goalless draw. Started with a 2-1 victory at home to the Canaries, newly promoted Buendia. It was a bit of a fan's favourite for the first few years until we sold him in our save last year, made it 1-0, so I wasn't mad to see him score against me, but Anthony Knocker, what a great player he's been for us this season coming back from his loan spell he and Marek Rodak have nailed down first team spots since their loan spell and it's great to see and the two goals he scored as well absolutely sensational strikes in a great 2-1 victory as we came from behind that one to win following that goal is away against Brighton and then a 3-0 victory at home to Leeds where we scored three goals in eight minutes but the goals man I mean seriously Dan James on loan from Manchester United scored a sensational solo goal but then Knockhart's goal was just strange <laughs> Really, really poor back pass. Nobody was alert to it. He just ran onto it and slotted it home. But the, the third goal, I mean, this was shades of Carrius in the Champions League final. What was Messier doing? I've got no idea. Just smacked the ball against Bobby Reed, And he just went straight into the back of the net. One of those goals where it's like, yeah, bit of a problem with the match engine there. But anyway, as you can see, after a very mixed run, but not too bad. We're in 11th place in the Premier League table. 14 games in. We do have the game in hand on quite a few teams around us right now. Uh, 21 points on the board. 11 points points off safety but of course still a long way to go with the second half of the season yet to be played and the really good encouraging thing we've seen this season is that whilst our goal scoring has been okay a little bit mixed mid-table really defensively we have been rock solid we're in the top five for defensive record here only 14 goals conceded in 14 games I'll tell you what I mentioned knockout there but Marek Rodak he has nailed down that number one jersey what a decision to replace Alphonse Areola with the Slovakian and not sign a new goalkeeper he's been great 
So I think that is basically that for what's been going on off camera. Don't think there's anything else to show you. So let's just dive right into the first of the two games. Again, when you look at our fixtures coming here uh, for December, Liverpool away, Arsenal and Chelsea at home, Manchester United away, Wolves away on Boxing Day, and then Burnley at home. I, I can see us losing all five of these games here, and that will make that Burnley game very important indeed with them rock bottom of the Premier League right now. So heading to the game, as you can see, we are sticking with the 4 2 3 one It's working really, really well, and right now on the injury report, only one player down. That's Ivan Cavallieri with a broken collarbone. Won't see him again until 2022. So heading to the game, this is our team. Rodak is in goal with a slight injury. Is it a bruised? Something. I think it's a bruise something. But he's okay to play. And the back four is Robinson, Tossin, Jerome, and Connor Roberts. What a partnership these are looking like already. I did say at the start of the season they could be a great duo for us for years to come. Lewis Cook and Gagliardini are through the middle with James on the left, knockout on the right, and Kenny supporting Reed up top. On the bench, Ashby Hammond, Mings, Reed, Zambo, Lamina Onoma, and Mitrovic as well. First of the two, it's the Reds away. Can't just get anything, but let's hope it's not 8 0 like last year. Come on, Fulham. Yeah, this is going to be a really interesting run for us because I think we'll find out where we can finish this season, depending on how we get through these five games. Like, if we do okay, and maybe pick up our first scalp of the series, and maybe a couple of draws along the way as well, then you could say possibly, maybe, we could sneak into the top ten come the end of the season. But if we, if we lose, like, all five of the games here before the Burnley clash, we'll have horrendous morale, horrendous form, as Becker... Becker? Allison turns away knockouts free kick and puts behind for a corner. And we'll be feeling pretty worried and starting to look over our shoulders as we slip down the table. It's going to be a very interesting period of December. Got a lot of confidence in this Fulham team moving forward. I, I do fear the mid-season collapse like we had last season, especially due to our fixtures as Jordan Henderson, the farthest one, just off target. But again, if we can get through this period largely unscathed, then I will be, you know, feeling relatively confident we'll be able to avoid a relegation scrap like last season. It's Latan Ibrahimovic, now for Liverpool, offloads to Mo Salah and plays a great crossfield to Mane. What a lightning quick counter-attack and they deserve that. Sadio with a strike, bottom corner. That was absolutely perfect. What a break. Just got to show you Latan stats whilst I'm here, don't I? Here is Ibrahimovic. Goodness gracious me, can't run to save his life, but these mental stats, these technical stats, this dude is just still his old age. Unbelievable. 28 minutes into the game, down by a goal, and yeah, we knew we'd lose this game as Henderson has played through by Salah, and that's just a great little quick free kick, and Liverpool take advantage. That's two really clever goals. Obviously, breaking into the top 10 was not an objective at the start of the season, and it still isn't now. As Robertson fires one in for his first of the year to make it free. Yeah, I really, I really don't mind if we finish in 15th, 16th, or even 17th again, like last season. So long as we just avoid the drop, that's all that matters to me. Finishing in the top 10 would be an incredible achievement, but this is a marathon, not a sprint. We've changed our team massively from last season with all the lone players going back and obviously this season with a few new signings that are making their mark in the first team. This season is all about gelling as a unit because we're developing the core and laying down the groundwork here for many years to come and making sure we just keep our heads above water. Top 10, I wouldn't necessarily say it's unrealistic to finish in. As Reed fires into the side netting, but to be honest... I don't care if it's 15th, 16th, or again, 17th place. That would do me fine. Got to remember, we are a bang average team. You got you to gotta know who you are. You know, we are not a team that should be looking for an outside shot of European football. We're not, we're not that team. We're not that team yet. We've got a long way to go until we can start doing those sort of things. So it's all about being aware of where we are and, and who we are. As Mitrovic heads in to give us a consolation goal, but I think it's going to be disallowed for offside, and it is indeed. VAR is probably going to chalk that one off there, and we won't get a consolation goal. Yep, goal disallowed for offside, and there you go. Full time, we don't need to replay FM, thank you very much. And there it is, 3-0 away at Anfield. But again, lads, just why would that demotivate you? Why would that demotivate you? No one expects us to get a point. Come on now. But either way, yeah, it's 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 a bit of a tricky period, this, these five games here. If we get battered in all the games, then I'll start to worry. But just if we just get a point or two here or there, it's not that disastrous. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. That goes for this season and the whole save. I will take 17th place. Absolutely no doubt about it. Just avoiding that bottom three and keeping the TV revenue is the most important thing to me. If you look at the finance of the club here, we're, we're dropping. And I don't really understand this either because 
for some reason, like even our wage bill is far lower than it was last season, where it was creeping up on, well, it was just over a million, but it could have been creeping up to 1.1 million. We're under 900k now. So why we're having more money coming out of the club, I don't really know. Because if you remember last season, um, we had the redevelopment of the stadium, and yet the gate receipts are actually lower than they were last season, which is something I, I really struggle to figure out. Unless it's because, oh, it's coming as the season goes on. Never mind, ignore me, ignore me, ignore me. I failed maths. <laughs> so, ends of the game, Arsenal, London, Derby, Craven Cottage. This will most likely be a defeat as well. The Gunners right now are flying in the Premier League. And hence the game, couple changed to my lineup here as you stick to 4 2 3 1. Rodak, same back four, Robinson to see in Jerome and Roberts with Lamina coming in to play alongside Zambo as a CM duo changes. James and Knockout are still on the wings, but Lewis Cook is getting phased further forward. I did say I'll play him here a few times this season, but to be honest here, Hasn't really done anything. We were playing deeper or further forward. Bit of a shame. Bobby Reed stood up top door on the bench. Ashby Hammond, Mings, Reed, Gagliardini, Kearney, Onima, and Mitrovic as well. Second and final game. It's the Gunners. I'll definitely take a point. Come on, Fulham. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. What has just happened? Oh, my word. What has just happened? Need to see this on the 3D replay. Leno... Trying to be cocky, doesn't pick it up under pressure, kicks it straight out to Dan James, who from 40 yards half volleys it past the German and into the unguarded net. What a howl! What is it about goalkeeping mistakes in this year's FM, especially with their feet? Unbelievable! Leno with the 15 kicking, the 10 passing to be fair, and the 7 vision. Maybe that's what let down the German for that goal there, but Fulham lead for an absolutely bizarre goal. Half an hour in, and we're an hour away from our first scalper to save. But it'll be a weird way to claim it, that's for sure. Approaching the final 50 minutes, Arsenal cannot break down our back line. But then, just as I say that, goodness gracious me, me and my big mouth, here we go. Marcus Alonso, Aubameyang, shot down by Roberts, and that is probably going to be a straight red. It is. Why would you do what? He's literally in his own half. He doesn't have a dive into tackle straight. Connor Roberts, he's got a does not dive into tackle straight, for God's sake. Come on, what is the point? All right, okay. Now, Harrison Reed, I'm actually retraining to play right back in this team, so he's going to get some genuine game time playing there. Uh, what I think I'll do is I'll take off Lewis Cook and we'll just play a 4-4-1 with Bobby Reed having to drop down a little bit deep to link in the inside forwards, so... Yeah, um, uh, do we start time wasting now with 10 minutes to go? I think we've got to press a little bit less, that's for sure. Now we're a man light. And I think, yeah, let's let's slow the pace of the ball down, shall we? And let's try and time waste just a little bit. I know it backfires often on FM, but we're 10 minutes away. We're down to 10 men. I want this scalp. Knockout, free kick. We're good from knees. Oh, Jerome! Almost his first. So we've gone practically the whole game without a highlight, and now we're going to have several in the final five minutes. You just know it in FM. As Reese Nelson picks it up and sends it long. Rodak, you, you got to make your mind up. Son. Oh, what was this? What was this? No. this is just not fair. He just slide tackled the ball in <laughs> with no one near him. Oh, fuck off. Don't you dare now lose this game. Come on. No. Thank you, Tosin. This would not be fair. No, come on, please. I would have taken the point pre-game. Oh, for God's sake. Every single time. Just kill me. I am going to do the stats after I've finished this. On the amount of points we've dropped from winning positions in the final five minutes of games. Because I tell you what, it is a lot of them. And we would be a Europa League standard club had we not dropped those points. Again, again, every single time we face a big team this happens. God, just please game, give us something. Unlucky boys, would have been nice to win there, but it wasn't to be. I mean, they're motivated this time, but 
I feel incredibly demotivated and demoralized and bloody depressed. That is just like literally like the fifth time in one and a half seasons this has happened, man. And Roberts, it all started with that red card as well, just fucking diving in for no reason whatsoever. Unbelievable. Massive defeat that. That would have been a huge win, our first goal of the series, and we lose it through two goals in five minutes. The second, the first goal, sorry. What on earth was that? That was me saying that Rodak, bringing him back, making a number one. What a great decision. Bloody hell, he ain't starting next week based on that. But that was his episode of the FM Save, guys. Big thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Despite the frustration, if you had them, please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. I'll tell you what, we'll return with games against. I think we're going to lose all three of these games. Here. So that Burnley game, as they're trying to claw out the bottom three, could be massive. Burnley at home to close out the calendar year. Then on the uh, New Year's Day, Leeds away, Ellen Road, FA Cup, third round. Two big games during the league and the cup as the January window will open. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode of the FM Save. Well, hopefully, there'll be fewer goalkeeping howlers very soon.